Happy Friday, everybody. Coach and hypnotist Susan Urban here. And as I promised you, this week was going to be all about hypnosis. So today I have something extremely insightful and informative for you. So would it be useful to you if you could learn how to attract the right partner? And I don't just mean life partner. And if you already are married, then you already are with a partner. I mean partner in every sense, in as in maybe in on a team that you're that you're working with, perhaps the right boss, uh, the right friends, just a partner in any sense. Imagine if you could find the right people in your life, and what if you could attract the right opportunities in your life? Well, I was working with a young lady. She was 37-ish, something like that. And she initially came to me because she said she had been in so many abusive relationships and she didn't understand why she kept attracting the wrong people and men in her life. And no matter what, she just always ended up in people, in men that were abusive to her and unkind, physically, mentally, emotionally abusive. And she just couldn't understand why this kept happening. And um, no matter, you know, like she had been in therapy before and she had tried different things. She read all the books and everything else. And, and yet she kept going back to the same kind of man. So that really was her number one problem. And before I tell you the story of what happened to this woman, I want to share something very important that I want you to understand about yourself. And that is how your mind works and what your mind's or brain, you can call mind, brain, what, what your mind's job really is. Please understand that your mind learns very early on, very early on from the moment you were born, what is familiar. That's how we survived, right? We had to belong to a tribe. We needed connection. And we feared rejection because otherwise we would, it would lead to extinction. So we learned very early on what was familiar. Now, I'm not saying good or bad. I'm just saying what is familiar. So that when we go out in, into the forest and we pick berries, we learn very early on these are the berries to pick. The blue ones, not the red ones, right? And we also become familiar with the circumstances around us. You know, uh, family dynamics, the words they used, how they raised you, how they talked to you, how they um, engaged with the world around them. And basically, that's how you became integrated into society. So you were really shaped by all those, you know, your culture, politics, religion, schools, coaches, family, family traditions, that's what shaped you, okay? That's how you discovered your identity. And again, I'm not saying what was good for you or bad for you. I'm just saying what was familiar to you, okay? So if, let's say you grow up and what is familiar to you at an early age are things like drugs and alcohol and abuse and uh, bad relationships and people who are unkind to each other and people who are sarcastic with each other and things like that. Well, guess what has just become familiar now? Is it making a little bit of sense now? So would it make sense that if that is what the brain learned is familiar, and by the way, when the brain learns what is familiar, Anything that is out of that little control zone, that comfort zone, is unfamiliar. So anytime you step out of that familiar, your brain is like, alert, alert, alert. Did you, where are you going? This is not, we're not used to this. This is not cool. You see? So, so follow me. So this, this woman who I worked with, 37-year-old, we did hypnosis, and lo and behold, not only did she give me one scene, but she gave me several scenes about specific events in her life at an early age. She was taken to a time where she was in a room on her own, but she could very clearly hear her parents 
fighting next door. In fact, she was very, very certain that there was physical abuse because she could hear the banging and her mom crying and all that kind of stuff. That was one scene. And of course, it made her feel helpless. It made her feel hopeless. It made her feel so small and like she couldn't do anything. And at the same time, she was wondering, how could my dad do this to my mom? So she had all these these thoughts spiraling through her mind. And at, at, at the same time, she realized that was an ongoing thing in her family. That was kind of like the normal thing, right? Then she was taken to another scene where she remembered clearly playing on the ground with some toys and her parents over her shouting over her about that they didn't have money and they couldn't afford and the whole conversation was about money and that they could never have what they want and money's always short and and all these all these messages about money and all all this fighting back and forth so what did she learn here she learned that money is not available to, to her. She can't, she can't afford. She basically learned the meaning of money, right? That she wasn't worthy of money, that she wants these things, but they're not available to her because that's what was familiar. That's what was, was taught to her at an early age, right? And then there was another scene where, uh, in fact, she later said that was just an ongoing thing. She remembered clearly how her dad spoke to her mom in a very dismissive, arrogant, um, uh, cruel, unkind way. Like she was a servant and she was just, she had to do this and she had to do that and, and she was not important and this is just the way things are here. And, and so he was, he, he, he would make fun of her. And, but again, that was an ongoing theme in the family. That's just how dad was. And mom simply accepted it. So guess what this young girl learned at an early age? All men talk to, to, to their wives or partners nasty and they're mean and, and they're derogatory and they speak dismissively and they're just not, not good. You know, men are, men are not good, right? They abuse women. That's basically what was in her early, I call it programming, what was familiar to her at an early age. Well, guess what? If that is what, what is familiar to you at an early age, and now you can think about your own childhood, about certain things what were familiar for you, about how people treated each other, you know, the, the subject of money, the subject of sex, the subject of traditions, religion, all of those things, how were they discussed? How were they being handled? That was your early programming. But now imagine this young lady grows up with these messages that just really go in because up until the age of six, six, seven or eight, nine, whatever, scientists are not very clear. We don't have the ability to differentiate whether something is good for us or not. We simply accept it as truth. And so now we go into our life accepting those beliefs and so now here's this woman, she wants to attract a beautiful man who treats her kindly, who supports her, who loves her, who loves her un unconditionally, but her brain only seeks out what is familiar. Do you see how this is happening? Because that is what was programmed into her mind. And any time this woman would meet a man who was, in fact, on first glance, he seemed kind and nice and easy to talk to and funny or whatever, right? Her brain was like, no, 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 no. That's not what's familiar. So she didn't pursue those men because subconsciously, you see, subconsciously, subconsciously, she sabotaged, sabotaged, try saying that, sabotaged herself from going after what she really wanted which was unconditional love and passion and kindness, right? So, so here is what I really want you to hear. How do you get out of this? How do you get out of this comfort or familiar zone, right? Well, understand this. As an adult, now here you are, you have goals. This woman finally wants to meet a man that will be worthy of her, that, that, she, can, that she can be friends with and, and respect, right? So initially, to attract that kind of man, she will have to go out of her comfort zone. She will have to 
go past of what's familiar. She will have to learn how to reject and, and how to see the red flags, which is, which is something I taught her. How to immediately figure out who is this guy, what does he stand for, is he worthy of you, what, what are the red flags? So this is something I teach my clients. And once you recognize that you must remove yourself from the situation and then, again, get out of your comfort zone and invite the, the men that are worthy to you. And so, again, initially the brain is going to put up a, a lot of, um, re, um, what's the word, a lot of, uh, the brain is going to put up a fight because it's not familiar, right? So it, 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 we, we need to reprogram the old programming. It's like a computer that's old and, and runs with an old programming system. It doesn't work anymore. You need to install new data. You need to install new information. Your, your mind is exactly the same way. So that in time, I love to, the way to explain it this way. Imagine if you're completely unaware of this programming and you now want to go after your goals and you want to make money and you want to approach clients or you want to attract the right partner. And, but your brain, which is like a wild horse, it's been running wild for all this time and you suddenly are aware like, oh my God, wait a minute, I've been attracting all these wrong men in my life. Good. That's a good start. That's number one. Number two is then for us to reprogram, retrain this wild horse that is running amic. And guess what? If you have ever trained a dog, an animal, a cat, whatever, initially it's a lot of work. It's a lot of energy. And it takes commitment. And it takes patience. And it takes love. And are you willing to give that to yourself? And hypnosis makes this so much quicker, faster, better, like pff, easier, you know, because hypnosis is all about ripping out the old program and installing a new program, which I call lovingly brainwashing. <laughs> but, uh, you know, so so that this wild horse initially it's going to resist. It's going to be like, what are you doing? I, this doesn't feel good. But in time, do you think that it might be worth in time to continue conditioning and and guiding this horse and taking it back to okay no we're doing this sit down I'm a dog trainer too right so so that's how I talk and do it again and again and again and again do you think that that might just get you different results do you think that that might just get you exactly what you want instead of self-sabotage and self-harm and self-destruction, which happens with negative self-talk, by the way, you know, because what this woman did for years and years and years, she blamed herself for attracting these men. She, she uh, judged herself. She criticized herself. She was like, it's your fault. You're so stupid. Why can't you see that these men are not no good in the first place? So she would literally crucify herself every single day. But that's not what's going to help you break through all these, these negative conditions in your life, all these things that you don't want. Self-criticism, self-judgment, self-blame and shame is the worst, the worst thing you can do for yourself. That is not going to help you. That is the exact opposite. The exact opposite. That, that is not helpful to you. It is not useful to you. And it does not work. So exactly self-love comes in in a big way. And most people don't know how to love themselves, how to accept themselves. Yeah, when we make mistakes, we're human. You know, but at the end of the day, self-love and really learning how to do that, that's when magic starts to happen. That's when you start to attract the right people in your life, whether that's partners, bosses, you know, you want to talk to your kids in a different way. You want to, you really want to break through to your kids, understand them, have meaningful conversations, have depth to your relationships Everything that I just shared with you, that's, that's, that's where, that's what it really comes down to. And guess what? Fast forward. Guess what? This woman now is in a real relationship. I say real because the other relationships were based on 
um, false identity. You know, she had been attracting the wrong men. But she's finally in a relationship where she gets to be herself. She doesn't need to apologize for herself anymore, which she used to do. She doesn't need to fix anybody because your job is not to fix people. My job is not to fix people. Right? She, she no longer saves the, the whales, call them alcoholics that are stranded at, at her front door. None of that. She is now in a relationship where she can wake up and be happy and be held in these arms where she loves to be in, where she gets to finally put her head on, 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 on a strong shoulder and surrender and feel so loved and feel appreciated. Yeah, remember, she had to learn how to, how, to, how to accept those feelings, right? The wild horse, remember? It takes a little bit of time. But then, in time, she realized how good it felt to her soul, how this really spoke to her, and how um, just every day was filled with bliss and gratitude and joy and so much happiness. So that's how that happens. <laughs> So let me know if this is useful information to you. And, you know, I, I, I would love to inspire you to go into your childhood. And, and look, the thing is, so much of what you learned in your childhood is, is probably very useful to you today still. Maybe your parents did teach you exactly how to handle money and exactly how to save and, and how, to, how to value certain things and how to respect yourself. That's, that's amazing. That's awesome. If that is what you were taught, great. Keep that program. You don't want to get rid of that program, right? So obviously that will serve you and help you because now you get to teach your children and, and you get to... Um, you get to... to to motivate your team members and your family members in a different way, right? Certain things are absolutely useful that you learned, but what are the things that were installed? I know it sounds so clinical, it sounds so harsh, but, but it's true. What are some of the things that were installed at an early age that may not serve you and that we get to now rip out because it's like a weed. If, if you're not aware of this, it's like a weed that just takes over your mind. And so, uh, so many of my clients ask me, well, how did you become the way you did? And, and it's daily weeding, daily weeding. I do it for myself every day. You know, I, I, I do self-hypnosis on myself and I, I weed my, my brain garden, mind garden, whatever you want to call it, daily. Because I decide what goes in, what stays in, and what has to come out. Because I don't want no weeds in my garden. I like to plant broccoli and basil and, you know, tulips and stuff like that. So <laughs> I want that to grow. So let me know if this is useful to you. And again, first thing, just become aware. Just become aware. What have you been believing? What have you been thinking? What, what are some of the thoughts in your mind that are not useful to you? And again... The reason I use hypnosis is because it's just, it's so easy. I always joke with my clients, like, are you ready for the heavy lifting? Today we're going to do the heavy lifting. And all you have to do there is just sit there, close your eyes, and you're already doing the heavy lifting. It's just the coolest thing ever. And it happens every time. So uh, the heavy lifting is done very easily in a, in a relaxed way. And, uh, and it's just amazing work. So I love it. And I wanted to share this with you and let me know what questions you have about hypnosis. Thank you, Anita, Joyce, John. I'm not sure who else is watching. I appreciate you. And, um, you know, feel free to share this video if you think it might be useful to somebody and let me know what questions you have. Um, yeah. And of course, if, if you're somebody or you know somebody who has anxiety, depression, self-doubt, you're attracting the wrong people, you don't know how to make money, you are uh, shy, you don't know how to break out of yourself, you feel intimidated about certain people. Oh, I mean, I've heard all that before. That's pretty much the kind of stuff I do. Um, I also help salespeople. Everybody's a salesperson. Um, how to learn hypnotic sales strategies and sales tactics because again if you're a parent if you're a coach if you're a team member if you're a business owner if you are a daughter or a son you're selling you just are i can show you how better 
Thanks.